This guy is very good. I'm going to tell you, he's way above my pay scale. For one thing, I like to say, he talks about LDL coming up, but he calls them bad LDL. That's a bias, bias of our medical institutions. There's no such thing as a bad LDL. And the fact that he's not able to deal with it properly is indication of how ingrained it is in our society. But his, his presentation is excellent. So we will start the presentation. Very important when it comes to these white blood cells. The next one is called receptor mediated endocytosis. What the heck is that? That's a big name, right? Receptor mediated. So we need an example of a receptor and a molecule that binds to that receptor. The most classically used examples is LDL, which is a lipoprotein, bad cholesterol. And then there's a particular molecule that the LDL binds to, <laughs> the LDL receptor. Pretty straightforward, right? This happens on the liver. When LDL binds onto this LDL receptor in the liver, there's little proteins. You know, there's these special little proteins called clathrins. What are they called here? We're going to look at the C. These are called clathrins. And what the clathrin molecules do is they bind to the membrane, which has the LDL receptor and the LDL bound to it, and creates a little invagination called a clathrin-coated pit. Then it continues to pull, 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 pull until it invaginates and creates a vesicle or an endosome. So then look what will happen as a result of this. Through this process of, what is it called? Receptor mediated endocytosis. We're going to take in this little structure here. So now we're gonna have a vesicle and that vesicle is actually gonna be called a endosome. That's what we like to call it, an endosome. Just like a phagosome is an endosome, it's just a special name from the process of phagocytosis. What does the endosome contain within it? It has the LDL receptors, and then it also has the LDL molecules bound to it. Guess what happens with this endosome? The endosome has little like, pumps on it, little proton pumps. And these little proton pumps, they start pushing in lots of protons, making this environment very acidic. You want to know what that protons do whenever they get pumped into this environment? They make the bond between the LDL receptor and the LDL very weak so that they disassociate from one another. So then as a process of this, look what will happen as a result of this. As the protons get pumped in, look at this. Let's kind of see what happens here. You're going to get kind of like a little bubbled vesicle here like a little bubbled one here, right? And then what happens is, is the process of these protons coming in, it separates the LDL receptors away from the LDL molecules. Then, after that process, guess what happens? We pinch this off and separate this into two separate vesicles. So now we're going to have that, and we're going to have this. And then you're going to have this vesicle here, which contains the LDL receptors, and this vesicle here, which is going to contain the LDL molecules. Guess where the LDL molecules will go? Well, they're a type of macromolecule. They will get sent to this lysosome. And when they get sent to the lysosome, guess what they're going to do? The lysosomes contain specific types of lipases and sphingomyelinases and all these different enzymes that will break down the cholesterol, the phospholipids, the proteins, all of the stuff within the LDL molecule. So what else will it break down? Not just the bacteria, but it will also break down in this example, since we're using this example, the bacteria and the LDL particle. The question is, is what the heck happens to this little receptor here? Just to finish the story, because I know you guys are begging to know what happened, right? You know, our, our cells are so cool. You know what they do with these LDL molecules? They send them to get recycled. So they get recycled and sent right back to the cell membrane to rebind into the plasma membrane and express these LDL receptors so that the next LDL can bind, bring it in, and do the same process. Now, again... You need to understand what the fate is of this lysosome. We understand it breaks down macromolecules from 
of particle matter via phagocytosis or breaks down macromolecules from receptor-mediated endocytosis. Once it breaks all these things down, the important thing to remember is what happens with this actual lysosome. So let's say it's, it's performed its function. It's broken down all these macromolecules and bacteria. Once it's done that, it's called a secondary lysosome. There's two things that can happen with this secondary lysosome. It can spit some of these molecules out into the cytosol that maybe can be used for certain metabolic pathways, or you know what else it can do? It can go to the cell membrane, bind with the cell membrane, and release some of these molecules out of the cell via a process called exocytosis. So now you guys should understand with a quick, quick recap, Lysosomes break down macromolecules within a bunch of different ways, right? Primarily via these hydrolytic enzymes. It can break down macromolecules for the process of phagocytosis, break down molecules from the process of receptor-mediated endocytosis. After it breaks it down, it can spit some of these molecules out into the cytosol, or it can spit it out of the cell via exocytosis. The last thing you need to know about the lysosomes, sometimes our cells, we have organelles that they just reach their prime. They're kaput. They're old geezers. They're done, like mitochondria and specific types of proteins within the cell. You can listen to the rest if you want. Um, but that's that's exactly how it's going to work with my feet. The blood vessels in my feet have too much plaque on it. From from decades of of. Inflammation caused by too much sugar, too much carbohydrates, which are terminated now. The, LD, the HDL will, will remove the, the cholesterol from the plaque. The L will give a... The HDL will give the LDL the cholesterol. The LDA will ship it to the liver. The lysosomes will convert the cholesterol to useful products, including energy. That's what my body has to do.